Hello to you. I feel a bit uncomfortable with this uh, table here in front of me. So, hello. My name is Stefan Heininger, and I would like to talk to you about Magenta Virtual Reality. So, almost two years ago, um, one of my bosses asked me to set up, you know, not just the technology, but a business plan. So, I will concentrate today on the possible business model of VR, because I love technology, but it's, you know, at the end, we have to make a business model out of it, and therefore, I would like to talk about you a little bit. And so, let's just to get an idea of, uh, of the product, let's have a view to a short trailer. Thank you. <laughs> so again, so this is a Magenta Virtual Reality app. It's uh, meant uh, for consumers actually to, uh, you know, get an overview about virtual reality and uh, things which are possible with it. So starting uh, again, coming back to, to my boss who asked me to organize virtual reality within Deutsche Telekom and what, you know, what is the relationship between Deutsche Telekom and virtual reality. So I was looking at the latest hype cycle, and we all see that something changed between last year. Who knows what happens? What's happened? Does someone know what happened? VR actually went back to mixed reality. So in last year, it was much, much more ahead, and now it's, it came back, and it's, it's, uh, now ch it has changed to mixed reality, and this is interesting. Uh, and augmented reality actually uh, moved a bit forward. So what does that mean to us? I don't know, actually. So I do care uh, about mass market, and I would like to set up a service which is relevant for the consumer mass market. And therefore, yeah, we set up a program, and uh, first we had to look at the target groups. And the target groups actually, it's for sure, it's uh, generation X and Y. We did uh, research classical and uh, research and, and uh, you know, all the things uh, to, to understand the needs. And what we found out is actually uh, we have to, um, first we have to fulfill or get an answer to a need. And there is today, actually we have the problem that there is no basic need for the end consumer to use VR every day. And this is the first uh, thing which came out of it. So it was a bit, uh, you know, not a good, a result of this first uh, analysis. Uh, we all love this technology, but again, we have to come to a service which the customer will use every day or every second day or so, not just once and then throw it away. So therefore, um, we were looking at the target groups and moving on. So again, uh, one of my bosses t t asked me, just grab one partner and we are done. And then we went into this whole industry, and as you as, as experts know, there is so many uh, things uh, to look at. Something is, uh, there's an overlay on the slide. Uh, so it's, uh, it's about content. So again, what is it good for? In, I mean, it's, at today it's, it's a technology, and you know, what do I get as, an, as a consumer? Um, there is, um, platform for sure, which we had to set up. Then there is the application layer, content distribution, and here Deutsche Telekom is for sure 
very, very uh, strong. So 40% of the German market almost, uh, 800 owned shops, and you know, all this uh, you know, availability to contact and consumers. This is a key asset of Deutsche Telekom. And Deutsche Telekom is very good in uh, entertainment, you know, all these uh, things. So we have to combine this and have, have to put on top virtual or augmented or mixed reality. VR devices, we all know these. Uh, so to be honest with you, there is no, and this is what we, what we found out of the market research, there is no device which is there, which could be used for everything, which would you use on, on the go, you know, in the train, to bring it out of the seller usage, you know. Today it's almost at home scenario, isolation, and that's actually the problems we have to cope with. So we found out we have to make it a service, an interaction service, so we launched social, I come to this later on, and we have to make it relevant um, to use it not just at home, to use it on the go, and so on. So you see, these magenta boxes, we are good in content distribution, we are good in applications, we know how to do that, and we, are, we have a platform. Um, concerning content, one word about content. So we all know these 360, um, 360 trailers and, and, and films. Again, it's nice to look at, but what is the reason that I will watch it uh, that I will watch it again and again and again. So there is no, today, no real big fiction market as the Netflix or so on. So we have, so, so I see, I think we have a real problem here uh, to be solved in the content area. I mean, gaming is a good thing, is a very relevant thing, but again, um, there must be much more value than just uh, casual games or hardcore gaming. Um, and, and we have to, again, bring up a whole content area. So we try to set this up, uh, which brings me to the, the proposition. So what is, what is the portal? So we try to uh, give every customer in Germany um, you know, access to the VR content, to the best um, VR movies, 360 f uh, things in, in terms of genre, uh, like sport, music, and entertainment. Uh, we offer VR app deals for telecom customers, brilliant designed apps from you probably, which are good. So we say, go for this app, use, try this out. And um, so the, the, the key asset here is we want to create reach. So again, 40% of the German market, all technologies use less when the end consumer is not using it. So we have to bring reach on this, you know, give everybody a cardboard just using it again and again. So otherwise, you know, they will get, uh, lose the contact to this technology. So number three is meet your friends in VR. This is what I uh, was talking about, social VR. You meet another, you, you meet your avatar, your friend, and you exchange your pictures from holidays, you c watch at a common browser, and so on. So I believe this, this is a, a functionality which uh, brings us added value and brings the end customer added value. So this is interaction, you can do learning with it, you can, you know, just watch movies, and so on and so on. So there's different reasons than just lean back and uh, watching a 360 uh, five-minute trailer of something, jumping, you know, base jump or so on. The fourth thing is, uh, so we just discussed it very heavily internally, it's about watching 2D content. So it's, uh, it looks, uh, sounds strange because you know, you, you set up a, a high-value portal with 360 and VR and volumetric functionalities, and then you just put 2D content in. So the reason is, I mean, how big is the content uh, in, in 360 today? It's very small compared to the 2D content. And so there is companies, I don't know whether they're here, uh, which put a, set up a service, for example, for planes in-flight VR. Who's here? Is there someone here? I don't know. So, you know, uh, to use VR on the go or in the train and so on and so on. And so there is a lot of pieces are in 2D um, on a big screen in high quality. So we have to have good glasses for it. So even 2D content could add a value to the end consumer. If we talk about the consumer proposition, and that's again, that's my task. It's not technology only, it's consumer proposition. <laughs> um, 
So the platforms is clear. Uh, it's Android, uh, Google for sure, Samsung Gear VR, um, and uh, Daydream, and the devices. Uh, I came to it uh, next step. So we launched the first six degrees of freedom device, the Lenovo Mirage. Uh, we have listed this in our, in our shops uh, on Telecom DE and in seven flagship stores. You can buy them, you can use them over, th over there. So and this means for Deutsche Telekom already something to bring a device uh, to a shop which is not sold in a million uh, you know, amounts. So coming to these two new features, and you are more than welcome to try this out on a small booth which we brought with us. The first thing is Magenta VR Lounge to meet up for, uh, up to four friends in VR. Create your avatar. It's a basic, basic avatar. Today, this will change to a nicer and better avatar. Watch 360 clips together, which is really nice. So I think this is a, a thing where you, you know, two or four people could have fun together. And um, communicate via voice, for sure, uh, recreational and business use cases. And again, uh, this browser, uh, uh, you know, it's the window to the world. You can exchange all you have, load, uh, show your cloud content, whatever. So this is the thing which we try to push, actually. Again, it's, a, it's not just a VR, it's a communication service, you know, like a chat room. And so I believe this is a, a, a very good, um, again, added value. And the second thing is this Magenta VR Cinema, where we try to put in one after the other, all the 2D content Deutsche Telekom uh, has got, so which is TV channels, VOD, all these Netflix and Amazon Primes, and so on and so on. Um, you know, to make, to make it uh, a relevant uh, you know, a device. So, for example, in the evening hours, if you want, don't want to disturb someone else, you could use it and watch, I don't know, 2D Netflix series or so. So we have to make it, to, to bring it away from a technical gadget, you know, from a nerd target group to a mass market thing. And this is actually not easy, as you all know, probably. Um, concerning content, so um, we tried out several things. On the left-hand side, you see Zero G. I don't know who knows the World Club Dome. Uh, this is an electronic EDM festival in Germany, and they um, had the idea to set up the first club in uh, zero G. So they um, rented uh, the ESA uh, plane, uh, you know, put away all the seats, and then they put a club in. And Steve Aoki as a DJ was in, and there was 30 guests, and they flew, I don't, I guess, uh, 30 par uh, parables, parables, however you call this. Um, and uh, so we did a 360 piece within it. So I always say it's, it's a totally useless thing on the one hand side, but on the other hand, it it's transports the values. So you see the room, people flying above and, and below you, and so, so you get an impression of getting, having more fun than just to watch at a 2D uh, um, computer, so to say. And there is other things, transports. So we did a, an art piece with the telecom art, uh, which is a nice one. It's uh, available in the app. The app is totally for free. It's an OTT app. Again, again uh, we have to create reach first before monetization is possible at all in the consumer market. It's totally different in the B2B market. I know that. I used to do marketing for B2B because there you can you know, calculate business cases and set up projects, which is fine. An end consumer is not interested in that. They want to pay, I don't know, one or two bucks or five and to get, you know, a huge amount of content. And so, um, so we did other pieces on our own. Uh, uh, for example, this football training with Bayern Munich, we did it on our own on the, uh, on the field. And uh, this is a relevant piece. People love it to be very close to their stars. So here again, here is an added value uh, compared to the 2D typical social channel of FC Bayern Munich. From the uh, plus the own uh, productions, we, we license content from the well-known, or to all of you well-known sources like John, Digital Domain, etc. And um, last week I talked to a, 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 yeah, a cinema producer and I, I asked him why they are not coming up with more fiction series. And they say that, that he told me they're not, almost not interested in. This was a bit, you know, um, was not a good information to us. 
because they are still thinking traditionally, uh, producing blockbusters, uh, cinema productions, and so on. So and if, if you all could help us actually to change this, we can make it a relevant you know, uh, content uh, area, this 360 or VR area. So otherwise, it stays as a gaming and you know, something which you use once a month or so. And so the task is actually to bring it up to a, make it an everyday device, to use it almost every day. And uh, again, it's a hard job uh, in the consumer area. I was talking about this hardware, so, and we sell it to 299, and we try to find out whether this is relevant at all to the German market. So it's, usually it costs 400. So we, we tested different you know, price tags in terms of is there, is there a request at all, you know. So we see, maybe a few of you buy this, uh, it's a bargain actually, 100 bucks less than, <laughs> than online. So we tried to, to find out uh, is this thing relevant uh, with the given content. It's a daydream area, but is this enough to sell you know, an, a device in a thousands and hundred thousands uh, you know, um, ranges? And, you know, and, and again, Deutsche Telekom is used to sell millions of products. So there's a huge gap. So therefore, this is actually my task. Um, much more to come. Uh, what we are going to do, actually, we, we try to set up a platform. So today, it, it is an app, and we all know the problems with apps. So it would be good to have a platform, you know. Um, coming back to the proposition, I would like to have a device which you switch on like an old radio, and it's there. And then you just do one or two clicks with your hands, however, and you access all the things you want. Today, you know, you have to put in a, a smartphone, in a, in a glass, switch it on, and it's not c compatible, and the battery is low, it's getting hot. Under it. So there is hundreds of things which are not good today to make it a really good consumer product, sorry to say. So therefore, um, we have to work on the hardware, we have to work on the easy to use, you know, of this, all of that. Um, um, we, want, we would like to connect to VR gaming. I did a research on VR gaming and it's not, definitely not that bright. And we all uh, read the, the numbers of Sony. Uh, they are not selling VR uh, devices in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way like two, two years ago, which is not a good information. So what about VR gaming? Is it relevant or not? Um, interactivity, I, I, tr I trust in, so to say. Um, content, again. 360, VR, volumetric, plus 2D has to be there. Otherwise, you know, why should I use VR <laughs> as a consumer? And hardware I was talking about. I, I watched at the, I looked at the new AR glasses we all know of these companies. And it's still, I would say, you know, years away from mass market. So I have like a bag and the glasses and, you know, it's not usable in, in the everyday mode, you know. So therefore, this is uh, what, I'm, uh, what we are walking, uh, uh, working at, and um, so I'm happy to get uh, answers from you because you are the industry and you are the experts, how we could push this. I see that B2B will bring it forward, but B2C, please all think of B2C and if you have good ideas, just contact us and uh, give us a hint uh, how we could uh, bring this uh, you know, up and running, uh, and again, this carrier, um, Deutsche Telekom, they want to come in a million range, then instead of thousands and hundred thousands. Any questions? Hang on. Uh, ah, one question. So it's lunch break, is, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is Deutsche sorry. Telekom also going to social media like Facebook and Twitter and things like that? Implement uh, your technology in there? So actually, we use the social channels for sure, but um, this technology is not implemented in this uh, social media channels, what you are saying. Yeah. I would say with this, thank you so much. Thank you for listening.